and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Fueled by Insanity, Darren's Path. So, yo, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go! Alright, let's do it. Ah, one of the endings. The second ending, I believe. Time to play bass. I did the rest. Time to play bass. I did the rest. It was nice having someone to create stuff with. Been wanting to do that for years. Only problem is we've got no one to sing it, but that's okay. Doesn't have to be fully finished yet. Yeah, sure, I'll pull it up real quick. With a few clicks and the press of a play button, the song starts. Nice. E. Alrighty. Hold up. This isn't the right track. Nah, I guess we'll just listen to this one first. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that is the end of that one. Yep. The end, okay. So let's... Go back. There we go. All right, so that was the end of that one. That really, that really was very quick. All right, so who should we call? Let's call the Ghostbusters. No, and right, we're gonna call Sean this time. I'll call Sean. I dial the number and press call. The phone rings twice before Sean answers. Hello? Sean, I need help. Someone's trying to break in. I think they might be armed. Saying those words, I'm afraid he won't believe me. I'm afraid he'll ask me to prove it to him, but he doesn't, thankfully. Is anyone else there with you? Have you called the police? Ted, Ted and Darren are at the store. I'm alone. The police won't get her in time. I just, I just need someone to hear. Please, I'm scared. I stare at the door the whole time, noticing that the door handle has stopped moving for now, yet I haven't heard him leave. C Colin, find somewhere to hide. I'll see if I can get hold of some hold of the police. No, no, the, the, <clears throat> Oh, God. Got stuck in my throat. No, the, the, they won't get here in time. That's how Parker died. I need someone now. The words come out of my mouth before I get a chance to stop myself. There's a short moment of silence before Sean speaks one word. What? I mentally scramble to work out how to explain myself when another sound... When I notice another sound from the front door. The door handle turns all the way to this, this time, and the door begins to open. A phone slips out of my hand, unable to keep my grip as the shock of what's happening hits me like a truck. Hey, Colin. Didn't expect to find you so soon. Shit! You know, it would have been easier if the fox kept his word, but... Either way... Here we are. I don't register with the words he's saying. My mind is in overdrive right now as I try to work out what to do. Caleb begins to take a step forward, and that's all it takes for me to turn and run. As soon as I do, I hear the raccoon chase behind me. I dip into the kitchen, hoping to find anything I can use as a weapon. The first thing that catches my eye is an unwashed steak knife on the counter. I grab it. The second I turn around, I'm met with Caleb charging straight at me, smacking my head against the cabinet. Ow! Disoriented, I thrust the knife at him. It only ends up grazing his left side, but it's enough to cause him to recoil. And that time, I run past him back to the main room, knife still in hand. I dash toward the still open door, hoping to get away. My tail is grabbed and yanked back, causing me to fall face first onto the ground, the knife flying out of my hand. You're not getting away. Not when I've waited so long for this. Get the fuck away from me! I turn back over and shout at the top of my lungs, hoping to scare him away. Anything to buy at least a little time. It seems to work as I'm able to get back up on my feet, only to immediately get slammed against the wall. Ah! Where do you think you're going? Backed into a corner but with my adrenaline pumping, I lean forward to bite his left shoulder as hard as I can, growling as I do. Gah! Caleb screams out in pain as my teeth sink into his flesh. I can taste his blood between my teeth as I hold on for dear life. I can't let go. If I do, I'm dead. In this moment, I feel like I have hope. I'm fighting back. I might have been, I might be backed against a wall, but I'm not giving him a chance. I can't. I won't end up like Parker. I, I won't. As if in slow-mo, I spot something in the corner of my eye. A knife! The knife I dropped! He has it. It's coming right at me! I let go of his shoulder and try to move out of the way, but it's too late. Ah! Ah! I met with a sharp, excruciating pain in my left eye, sending me immediately into a state of shock. My right eye instinctively closes as well, the agony too much to bear. I'm gonna die. I know I'm going to die now. Please, let it be quick. I fall to the floor as I await my fate. I can't open my eyes. I don't know if the knife is still in my eye or not. Everything is pain. I hear a thud and the sound of something hitting the floor. I'm not dead yet. I need to know what happened, so I push through the pain to try and open my right eye. The first thing I see is Caleb lying on the ground, unconscious. I look up and see my brother, staring at me in horror. Ted's a hunt behind him, equally in shock. Y your eye! Ah! D Darren? I-I'm alive! Darren, save me! 
Something metal drops from Darren's hands and he drops to his knees. His eyes stay fixed on me the whole time. Oh no, 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 no. His reaction terrifies me because it means things are really bad. My eye hurts. It hurts so much. I can't open it. I'm in too much pain to. I can feel the blood dripping down, but it still hasn't hit me yet what's just happened. I thought that my eye might be gone. I can't even fathom it. We need to get you to a hospital. Ted, T Ted, do you have... Darren scans the room for Ted, but he's not here. Ted, where'd you go? We need... From the corner of my vision, I see Ted re-enter the room with a tense expression on his face. It takes me a second to realize what's going on, but then I see it. He's carrying a pistol, one I recognize to be Darren's. What are you doing? Where'd you... Oh, excuse me. Where'd you get that? It was under your bed, you doof. Might you think that was a good place to hide a firearm? What's going on? How did Ted know Darren had a gun? This isn't Ted. This isn't Ted at all. Ted acts nothing like this. Put it down. P please. Calm down. I only took it for self-defense. For all of us. I don't know how this guy got out, but this is bad. This is very, very bad. And I'm pissed at whoever let this happen. How in the world does a prison let someone like this get out? There's no way this should have happened. Look, I, I don't know what's going on, but we need to get Colin to a hospital. Darren looks over at me. At least I think he does. I'm not really with it. I just... I'm in shock. I know. I know we need to, but we've got a bigger... We've got bigger worries right now. Just give me a second to... Bigger worries? Do you not see Colin right now? We have to get him some help right away. Do you not see Caleb right now? You know, Jeffrey's friend who's been a possessed murderer for two years now? We were lucky to get here in time. Parker wasn't so lucky. He knows about them too? How? I never told anyone. The only person who knows is... Kajuro. It's you, isn't it? It has to be. What? What are you? Even, what are you talking about? Ted eases up and lets out a sigh. Look, two years ago. Oh God. I think Ted's explaining stuff to Darren. I already know this story. I lived it, and Kajuro kept bringing it back up this week. Ted might be Kajuro. In fact, I'm positive he has to be. But I don't care about that right now. It doesn't matter. Everything that's happening, it doesn't feel real. No, that's not true at all. The sharp and bearable stinging pain is the most real thing I've ever felt. Not that the initial shock is wearing off, it's getting worse with each passing second. I can't take it. It hurts too much. The two people look at me with pity or concern. Something along those lines, I think. I'm trying my best to hold it together, but I can't. This is torture. There's no end in sight. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. As long as we sit around here doing nothing, I'm just going to get worse. Do something! You don't just stand there! Please, I don't want to die. You're not going to die. Who the fuck are you to say that? I'm just, I'm scared and I need help. I don't care what happens to Caleb, just please get me to the hospital. Ted's focus shifts from me to the unconscious raccoon and then back to me. He lets out a nervous laugh. I never sigh. Okay, I'll go ahead and call an ambulance, and the police too, I guess. What, why an ambulance? Darren, you can drive me, right? I expect to see Darren move to help me out the door, but he just stands there staring off into space. Darren? H hello? He's not responding, and I don't know why. I need him right now, he's not doing anything, and that scares me. I have to make sure he knows that this is urgent, that there's not time for whatever I th this is I think he this is he's doing. Darren, can you get with it and help me for once in your life? I need you and you aren't doing anything. I don't mean half those were half of those words yet they come out anyway. Darren panics upon hearing me shout at him. Right, right. S sorry. I He reaches into his pocket and grabs his keys only to fumble and drop them the instant they're out. Ah, I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As he scrambles to pick the keys back up, I can't avoid noticing how, I hate the word, but pathetic? How pathetic he looks. This isn't how I think of Darren. It never has been, but I'm just scared. He's always been there for me when I need it, when I need someone. He's never struggled with anything before, but now when I need him most, he's like this. Did he break? I played the scenario back in my head, trying to look at it from his side of things. He went with Ted to the store to get some food. I didn't fill up to going, so I stayed here. Then when he got back, he found me, well... He saved my life, but he was too late to save me from losing my eye. I wince at even the thought of the word eye. My mind, everything, it's off. How am I supposed to keep it together right now? How am I supposed to expect Darren to be a superhero throughout this? He's just a person like me. And yet here I am, yelling at him. I don't get to think about it much longer before Darren talks. He's shaking, but he's trying his best. Uh, okay, okay, well, let's go. I'll get you there, and then you'll be okay. I've got this. Are you going to be okay to drive? I don't know. What else am I? But what else am I supposed to do? I think you should wait for the ambulance. But no, seriously. The last thing we need is for you two to get into a car wreck. If you can't even hold on to your keys, what makes you think you'll be safe behind the wheel? Jeffrey's almost. Jeffrey's already lost one eye. Don't let him lose every, anything else. I growl at Ted. Yet, despite how much I hate what he's saying, I hold my tongue. 
I'm not at all in a good state to argue, and I know that. How long is it going to take for an ambulance to arrive? How long will it take for the police to arrive? They aren't fast, I know that. How am I supposed to believe they'll be here in time? I'm going to cry so badly, but for some reason that's not what's happening. If I had just told anyone about Caleb, this wouldn't have happened. I regret lying. I regret pretending everything was fine when it wasn't. I deserve this, but I really, really want this all to go away. I want to rewind the two a to two hours ago and have the normal day I was meant to have. I just need to have this not happen. But that's insane. That's not how it really is. Not how reality works. I know I have to deal with this, but I don't want to. I so badly don't want to. But my ear twitches as I hear a sound from outside. It sounds like a car pulling up in our driveway. That was fast. I only called a couple minutes ago. I look over at the open door, waiting for whoever is there to come in. My hope is that it's the police, but instead... I'm here. Is everything okay? Sean? The second he hears my voice, he looks my way with horror written all over his face. The same way Darren and Ted had done when they first saw me. I forgot that I had called him before Caleb broke in. Of course he'd show up then. Sean's like Darren. He's always there for me, so of course this time wouldn't be different. Right now, though, I don't want him here. I don't want this to be his problem. I want him to be able to have a normal day and not have to deal with this, but still, I'm thankful to see him. Sean, you're here. You can drive, right? We need to get Jeffrey to the hospital. The ambulance is on its way, but we need to we need to get there now. Jeffrey's eye. Watch out! From behind us, I hear Ted shout at the top of his lungs, followed by a gunshot. When I look behind me, I see Caleb lying on the floor just a couple feet away from me. He's got a bullet wound in his back. Ted's standing right behind him with the pistol still drawn. He's shaking. He looks mortified. Ted takes several steps back and plops down on Darren's chair, nearly falling all, nearly falling all the, over on the way. He drops the gun onto the small gap between the chair and the, cra and the couch and crosses his arms tightly against his stomach. I, I had to! He shouts as if responding to an accusation that was never thrown. He was about to stab Jeffrey! Oh no, no! He's not dead, is he? Look down towards Caleb, knowing full well that I'm not going to like what I see. Oh, damn. He's looking back at me with those same horrid, glowing eyes. Both anger and pain are written all over him. Is this real? Is this how things end? All because of one secret, one I should have revealed long ago. No, no, he's just been shot, but it's fine, Mott, right? Things can be done for him, and then he'll be fine. I just want my friend back. Why? Why did you let this happen? My heart races as he speaks to me. I don't want to hear what he has to say, but I can't bring myself to ignore him either. Not this time, at least. Why did you say anything? You left me trapped. That's what I did. There's no running away from the tr no, There's no running away from the truth. I know there isn't. Even so. You're not Caleb. Is that what you tell yourself? How cruel. Caleb squints and groans in pain. Once he makes it through that wave of pain, he speaks once more. There's a reason I went after you. I value my friends more than you'll ever know. Caleb coughs, and I'm sure I see some blood spill out. I expect Darren or Sean or even Ted to say something, but no one does. They must be in as much shock as I am. It's a damn shame I have to go out like this. Two years alone in a cell. You and the mouse are all I could think about. But you. You know, I fantasized about you every night. You didn't think once about me, did you? I know you're not Caleb. I'm not going to fall for this. You're just a curse trying to hurt me. Is that what you think? <laughs> I wonder what could have been if none of this ever happened. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> is there anything... Is anything he's saying true? I don't know. Caleb's in there, I know, but this isn't him talking. But what if this really is how he feels? We weren't even close. We barely talked to each other. I thought he talked to Marshall more anyways. Now I feel more guilty than ever that I've tried to forget about him. Now that he's saying all this, I have, I have to know more. I want to know. From the real Caleb, as much as I know that can't happen. But still, I have to ask... Caleb, you can hear me, right? The real Caleb? Are you? I should, as I speak, I notice his head lean back down. And I don't see him breathing. C Caleb? I look around at Sean and Darren, hoping, they'll, hoping that somehow they'll know what to do. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be able to help him and help him... Maybe they'll be able to help him out and get him to the hospital. And then Kaijuro can do whatever it is he needs to do to get rid of this curse. He said he could do that, but... I don't know what Caleb was saying, but I believe Kajuro when he told me he'd save him. Because I did everything right. I did what I was told. And he said I'd be okay, that everyone would be okay if I did. Sean walks over and feels Caleb for a pulse. 
I already know he's going to say that everything's fine, so I don't know why he's doing that. Maybe he just wants to find out for himself, so he won't have to worry. But, he's, but, he, but he's not saying anything. Ted gets up and walks over. He's okay, right? Is he okay? Sean answers. No. I think he's dead. As soon as I hear those, as soon as he hears those words, I look a pure terror overcomes overcomes Ted. No, that can't happen. Ted, he's. To everyone's surprise, a stone, the one from the cave, actually materializes above Caleb's body. All four of us stare at it in confusion and shock. Why is that? Well, slight, the stone moves a little bit closer to Ted. Considering how absolutely afraid he is, he must know something we don't, something bad. It doesn't take long before we learn why. Oh, shit. Ah! Uh, what? What just happened? Ted? What happened to your eyes? Oh, shit. Someone, please tell me that didn't just happen. I fucked up. I fucked up so much. It, it went to me. It, it went to me, didn't it? Yeah, that's... What the hell's going on? Fuck, fuck, fuck! This is why I said we need to deal with Caleb first. Not the stupid ambulance! It's just going to keep happening. Get rid of it. You can do that, right? You said you could. You can fix the curse. You can make it go away. No, I can't. Not here. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna pause it right here. Oh, man, this is bad. Woo! Oh, man. Wow, these endings definitely are qu are quite different from each other. I am really, I am really liking that. Anyway, y'all, we'll probably wrap it up in the next video. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Ooh, oh, bless me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.